So in preparing for this video today, I got so confused. Samsung has about 10 different flagship QLED TVs over the past couple of years, uh, and that's just in 4K. We've also got 8K, and I just don't know what Samsung's doing here. Is there any rhyme and reason to this? Yeah, it's extremely confusing from the perspective of like, what TV should you buy from Samsung if you're gonna buy a QLED? And so we're gonna go over all that, kind of talk about the differences, try to make you know heads or tails of this stuff, and give you some good buying advice toward the end. So first, we've had the QN90C, and the QN95C this year. Both are QLED TVs, right? I mean, that's easy. Piece sure, of cake. yeah. And honestly, from the outside, they both look very similar. I mean, it, they're almost identical. I think the only difference is where the TV stands were a little different. I think they just clicked on a little differently. That's, that's all I really noticed. And then really just that the better version, the QN95C, has eight speakers in the back that sort of look like the 8K version, but neither one of them have the One Connect box. And last year's version of the top tier 4K had a One Connect box. So yes, it's a little confusing, but more or less, the two look the same from the outside. Yeah, Graham Erdley asked if missing the One Connect box makes a difference. I mean, I don't know. I think it's just like a decision from Samsung to change their philosophy. I think, you know, having the One Connect box has always been cool because it kind of signifies top tier Samsung TV to a degree. And having it in some regions of the world is useful. In the US, I think it's not as useful because a lot of people wall mount their TVs. And so having a One Connect box is kind of confusing because normally HDMI cords and power outlets are kind of up on the wall behind a TV in a lot of instances. So having the One Connect box up there kind of makes that confusing. Now this year they did put the One Connect box, you're able to connect it to the back of the TV. So then it could be up there, but that wire that they give you is not in wall rated. So the one wire going from the TV to the One Connect box isn't in wall rated where HDMIs are. So then it's like, do you really wanna run that proprietary cord down the wall, inside the wall, you know, versus just having the HDMIs and the power up there? So there's a lot of like nuance in that. And I don't know if that's the only reason they took it out. They still have the One Connect box in the 8K model this year, and then also in the S95C, the QD OLED. So just those two models, and then the Samsung frame, of course, I believe it has a different One Connect box, but also has it. And so I just think like, depending on where you are in the world, I know overseas, a lot of people have stone houses and they don't run the wires as much. They don't hang the TVs on the wall as much. So then the One Connect box seems nicer because it's like, okay, everything just plugs in there and it's easy. So. I don't think it's the big difference. There's a lot of other differences in the TVs that we can talk about. Okay. So besides some external differences, Skywatcher and some others have asked about uh, the picture quality differences from this QN95C, the QN90C, and some of the previous year's models. So can you give me some feedback on that? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to it. I mean, that's the thing. And kind of why we titled this video the way it was. It's, there's so many differences it's really confusing and I wanna to get to like buying advice eventually, but this year they've made just different TVs in general. Last year it was like that the QN95B and the QN90B just differed in the fact that there was a One Connect box or not. They had the same amount of dimming zones, it was more or less the same panel. So you were getting a TV, one with a One Connect box, one without. And then they had a lesser model as well, the QN85B, which we'll talk about. But this year they have three different models and all of them are different. They all have different panels. They all have different amounts of dimming zones. So it's very confusing. And the two that we've checked out, the QN90C and the QN95C. So the QN95C has twice the amount of dimming zones, which you know makes it better for getting really good black levels and black areas around very bright areas. So that's a great improvement to have twice the dimming zones, which is more like the 8K version, but then no one connect box. And that's a VA panel, which is like a traditional panel. So kind of similar from what we would expect from a Samsung TV. Bright, awesome looking. And then it has that anti-reflective coating, which isn't as aggressive as normal, but it has you know, the ability to really knock down reflections. And so it looks great. And then the QN90C is a different panel altogether. Something that we don't think we've seen from Samsung yet. It's an ADS type panel, but it's you know, even on the 85 inch version that we had, they never had that before. So a different kind of panel, 
It did not have a strong of anti-reflective properties. So, you know, that's good and bad because it didn't have that rainbow kind of spread across the screen. But when you shine a light directly on it, it doesn't knock down that reflection as much. It's more like the QN85, which was the lower version last year. So, and then they have that version as well, which I thought looked okay last year, but this year, our friend Stop the FOMO took a picture from a Costco that has the new QN85C, which is technically the third level down from Samsung, although they're all really good QLEDs. And he showed that the, the ADS panel, which I think is lesser, looked better from an angle than the VA panel, the larger one. So a lot of confusing things basically to say that all three of the TVs this year and all three last year were pretty good. But overall, there's like a feature benefit trade-off that we're going to get into in a little bit here. I mean, I will rank these TVs, I guess, from you know top to bottom and buying advice. But a lot of great options, a little bit confusing, but we're going to have to move on for now. So somewhere in there, I heard you say dimming zones. So speaking of that, I saw that your football buddy, High Def News, said that snowflake test is no joke and it handled it like a champ. It did. He's going to be pretty excited as the Jets have Aaron Rodgers. He's a big Jets fan, oh. so that's okay. I'm happy for Aaron Rodgers. It's all right, good for him. Whatever. Hope he does well over there. I don't care. Go Packers. Go Steelers. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. Uh, that was a cool test. We did this you know, snowflake test where they go up and down and it's normally just crushes an LCD based TV, especially one with an inferior algorithm. It really is uh, something that's very difficult for those types of TVs and it held up well, it looks really good. And I think having twice the dimming zones, like the 8K version is a benefit to the QN95C. Yes, yeah, so I heard a lot of talking, but I didn't quite hear about the picture quality. Yes, well, yeah, so I kind of got ahead of myself there about all the differences, but a lot of these TVs look fantastic. So I thought the QN95C looked a little bit better, you know, but this is gonna go for both of the TVs. They both look fantastic when you're watching HDR. This year you have the, the benefit of choosing whether or not you wanna watch HDR with it more accurate mode, or if you wanna watch it with the more traditional punchy mode, you can change the tone mapping active or static. I know that's very important to you, right? Oh, absolutely. You couldn't do without the static tone oh, mapping. Gosh, right? you said it right there. I mean, these things are you know a little bit over the head of the common buyer of a TV, uh, but that's one difference from last year to this year. So in HDR, I like the, the active tone mapping. I think it looks punchier and better. And I think it looked better on the QN95C. Okay, but what about Dolby Vision? We get a lot of comments on that. Yeah, I mean, people are really angry if Samsung doesn't have Dolby Vision or, you know, or a lot of people try to say it doesn't matter. I don't think it's a huge deal for Samsung QLED TVs because I feel like they're pretty bright with the active tone mapping, but yeah, I'm not the end all be all on that. Dolby Vision is kind of the industry standard. And if you're not gonna buy a Samsung because it doesn't have Dolby Vision, then so be it. That's your choice. But it wouldn't be the thing that turns me away from Samsung. There are other things about TVs that I like or don't like that I think are more important than whether or not it has Dolby Vision or not. But that's for HDR. And then for gaming, obviously gaming is awesome on Samsung TVs. I don't think I've ever played games on Samsungs and been disappointed. They have so many awesome gaming features, the 4K at 120, they have VRR, you got the cool pop-up where you can see what's going on in the game. So pretty fun overall. And then you have, you know, the new hub cloud gaming, which is awesome. Still needs a little work, you know, it's dependent upon how fast your internet speed is. But more or less, it's like playing games without having to have a console. So it's pretty awesome. But how do PS3 games look on this? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I barely play any kind of games, so obviously there are better resources out for gaming specifically. But what I do watch, sports and cable and news and all that, and you know, again, not much to complain about. I think there was a couple of comments, I don't think we have them written down, about upscaling on Samsung TVs. And I would have to say that it may be trailing just a little bit some of the other brands that we really like. Just because when I'm watching something like YouTube TV, which we watch a lot of, it just doesn't look quite as sharp or upscaled as well as some of the other brands. And sometimes it's because I'm watching them on OLED TVs, which maybe I just like OLED upscaling better. But you know, in general, I think it's fine for upscaling and the better source you give it, it looks great. You know, gaming, HDR movies, all that. But if you're just watching new sports cable, maybe you just buy a less expensive TV anyways. But overall, I'm pretty happy with all the different content that we were watching out. Motion looks good, you know, the processing, the operating system, all a little better than last year. So improvements as we go, you know? Okay, so sounds like overall Samsung TVs are pretty good, which we, we know that. Um, but getting into some buying advice, Lonnie Williamson asked if it would be worth it to upgrade from a two-year-old Samsung QLED or not. Has it changed that much? Is it worth it? 
I, I think I answered that question. I think I said probably not. I'm, oh, I know someone had asked about the QN90A, which is two years old. And I would say probably not because they've done mini LED for three years now. So uh, I think if you had bought a Samsung before the mini LED, I'd probably say yes. Because, you know, the black levels, the dimming zones, the brightness has all increased and improved over, you know, the last few years. But if you're just coming from a mini LED from one or two years ago, it's tough to say that this year is dramatically better than last year. You know, I think it's going to have to be three or four or five years where you're going to notice huge differences in these TVs. So I would say no for just the, the A series, which was two years ago. And if you got one last year, of course, I don't think it's still that much of a change. I think they're slowly getting better. But I think because, you know, some of the ones from last year are on sale, I would just go for, you know, whatever you can get from last year. Okay, so the Truman Show asked Brian. I don't know who Brian is. We've got, we've got some people call this guy Brandon B. I call him Schmoopsy Poo. Um, <laughs> do you think the QN95C here behind us is worth the upgrade over the QN90C? Is the improvement minor? What do you think? That's a tough question. I mean, they're kind of just like two different TVs. I definitely think the QN95C is the better TV. I mean, but it's very expensive right now, but it is better. It kind of merges last year's 8K, but doesn't have the One Connect box. It does have, you know, the more traditional VA panel, which I like, and better anti-reflective properties. So I think it is a little bit better. It does have a little bit more of the dirty screen effect. I don't think we even mentioned that yet that anti-reflective coating and that VA panel sometimes create more uniformity issues. So sometimes if you're watching bright sports, it may look like there's a little bit of dirt on the screen when it's going left or right. So that is more inherent to that QN95C, which we had and showed. The QN90C seems like it's not a progression of the QN90B from last year, but kind of like it went to the side a bit. It has a different panel. It's similarly bright, similar blooming. It does have a little less of the dirty screen effect and it does have a little less of that reflective coating. So I feel like that would do really well in most houses. And you know, it's gonna be more mainstream. You're gonna find it in Best Buy, Costco. Um, you're not gonna find the QN95C in Costco's across the US. And I don't know if that's kind of the plan with Samsung and why there's so many models, but it's more of a worldwide model. It is the flagship, the QN95C, but the QN90C is slightly below that. And so depending on the price points, you know, it's gonna be a tough choice and you're gonna to have to make that decision to save a little bit of money or just go for the best. So what I hear you saying is that this TV is the pit bull of Samsung's TVs. The, I don't get it. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> oh, like the rapper pit bull? Yeah. Yeah, that went right over my head. All <laughs> right, fair five. enough. <laughs> okay. okay, so next up we have Chris Myers asked, any idea when this TV will be in Best Buy, the Q90, QN95C? Yeah, that, that I mean, it kind of goes to the point I was making. I it's not as ready available in the US. So if I looked back on Best Buy's website today and the 55 inch version of the QN95B is available, but some of the other ones are not available. And I think this TV that we have here is only right now available on Samsung's website. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it on, Eric? Is it on? Last I checked, you can't get any of them. Yeah, so you can't get it on, on Amazon, Best Buy. The only place we can get it at is Samsung or it's soon to be coming out on Samsung's website. So. I'm not sure in the US if you're gonna have access to the QN95C as much as you may want. So, you know, again, worldwide, maybe it's easier to get, but to answer your question, no idea. Okay, B, so I'm still pretty confused here. I want you to rank these TVs top to bottom. Don't mess around, clear and concise, hit me. All right, okay, I'll try to do this. This is gonna be the best of buying advice I can give you. Right now, at the time of this video launch, I likely would buy the QN90B from last year. I like that TV, it was good. I don't have a lot of complaints about it. More or less, it's a great QLED TV and it's extremely well-priced. But if you're going to be watching this as the summer goes on and toward the fall, I definitely think the QN95C is an upgrade. It has more dimming zones. It doesn't have quite as an aggressive anti-reflective coating, so that's Probably a good thing. It was very strong on the uh, previous year's TVs. So I think that's obviously the best TV of all of them. Then you have the decision to get like a QN90C, which is the more readily available TV or the QN85 version, whether it's the B or C. And I think that the QN90C is kind of like a newer ADS panel where it's not technically 
a downgrade to a degree, like they have three models for a reason in the QN95, QN90, QN85, there are some minimal differences. So I would go with that mainstream QN90C, which will be available at Best Buy. You can get it at Costco's. I guarantee it'll be all over the Costco's eventually here. And it's gonna be the flagship for most people. So that would be kind of the next tier down. And then besides that, the QN85C is fine. I like that as well. It's still very bright and very similar to these other TVs. Uh, it's just better priced and it's not as readily available again. So it's like the top one's not as, as easy to get. The middle one is really easy to get. The bottom one's a little harder to get. But I think they're all three very good QLED TVs. Uh, and that QN95C is still the best one that I've seen probably the best 4K QLED I've ever seen. So that kind of makes it like solid, right? I'm saying it's the best TV. Yeah, and you see a lot of TVs. And we're gonna get into a lot of other TVs this year that may contend with that. But for the most part, I think that's the best choice, but still expensive. And then you got last year's, that's you know not quite as good maybe, but a much better price at this point. Yeah, worth it. So if people are still confused after all of that great information, do we have a resource for them? They probably are confused, but we do have a resource. You can go to be the installer.com forward slash quiz and take the TV quiz where we ask you a bunch of questions and figure out what TV would be best for you based on the room conditions and how far you sit away and what content you watch and all that. You can find the link in the description below, but it really does help you because it kind of gives you a few different options of TVs and we're always updating that. So go down there, click on it, helps the channel out. We really appreciate it. Well, I'm gonna have to take that quiz because I heard from a little birdie that the Samsung QD OLED was the best TV out there. Right, it is, it's a great TV. Check out the unboxing of the QD OLED right there and check out some of these QLED videos and we'll see you guys on the next one.